Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. For the online broadcast network that features movie discussion, news, and interviews, press one. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. From the Popcorn Talk Network, the number one online broadcast network for movie talk, this is Bolly What? The show where we break down all you need to know about Bollywood and its movies. Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. It's time for your weekly dose of spice with Bolly What? If you guys are watching this live, hello to you. Make sure to use the hashtag Popcorn Talk Network as well as the hashtag Bolly What? I'm your host, Kanika Lal. Follow me on Twitter at Kanika Lal and Instagram at You Can Have It Lal. And I'm joined by my co host for today. Hey everyone, Vivian Adobe here, Vivaciously Viv on Instagram and Twitter. We have so much to talk about today, and we have such a cute co-host, <laughs> guest co-host. We do. I, this and might be a little embarrassing. I just added you out as a total hottie McCott hot, but is there someone else here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all nervous now. <laughs> well, before we introduce this uh, this hottie, though, we need to let you guys I know. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> Someone else coming? I don't know. <laughs> to make sure to follow Popcorn Talk Network on all social media platforms, we've got YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, even. You know, keep commenting, liking, disliking. We want to know <laughs> what you want to hear more of because obviously the show is for you guys. So log on to all of those and, and let us know what you guys think. So time to get to our special guest today, who I don't even know where to begin. Okay, he well, we is began. He's former, <laughs> about what he's done though, right? I mean, former model, Mr. India Global. He was an award-winning filmmaker at age 21, so to speak. He is named top, uh, one of the top 50 coolest daisies in the world. Uh, what else do, what else do we got here? He also has a very, uh, hot new show out keeping up with the guptas which is on now at 20th century fox which you know we'll talk a little bit about and most importantly he was named india's sex symbol by south asia magazine see i was not lying sunny tripathi <laughs> everyone thank you yeah those are all like exaggerations to the max but thank you hey you still achieved it so you, <clears throat> you still got it how are you doing good how are you thanks for having me thank you for coming yeah. in so first of all i want to do a little bit of a fun rapid fire round it's called gutta masala oh god Okay. <laughs> Prepare yourself. My garam yeah. masala around just to get I viewers. just don't do well with garam masala in general, like well, the actual good. spice. So oh, I was going to actually bring that in so you can just, you know. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't, so <clears throat> you should like me for that. But right. let's, so viewers can get to know, and listeners, get to know you in different light. Sure. Ready? Okay. First thing you ate this morning. Mexican food. Whoa. <laughs> <What's it like? laughs> okay. Favorite word. Spectacular. You're taking mm. too long with your answers. Yeah, faster. faster. Big, Sorry. Biggest pet peeve. Uh, stupidity. <laughs> Last person who texted you. Dad. Oh, that's cute. Best and worst thing about Sunny T. Uh. Best. Perseverance. Worst. Uh, self control. Okay. A oh. Hollywood film you have <clears throat> been in. You have been part of in a heartbeat. Any anyone. Avatar. Mm. What would it be the first thing you would do if you woke up as Kanye West? Just stop. <laughs> Leonardo, <clears throat> Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, hero. Amita Bachchan. Hero. So you would, you would hero if you woke up as them. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I am a I hero. Do, what would you yeah. do? Oh, um, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Do what you have to do. Yeah. All right, one word reaction to these three words. Chicken tikka masala. Vegetarian. Mm. Los Angeles. Love it. Politics. Scary. Travel. Love. Impossible. False. <laughs> A piece of advice you wish you got 10 years ago? Um, to enjoy the failures. Huh. Have you enjoyed the failures? No, oh, you I haven't have. had too many of them. No, 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 I have, I have. You You'll have. learn, you'll learn. Which yeah. is why I asked that. Yeah. And last question. Which Bollywood film should have a Hollywood remake? Ooh. Um, Lagan. Ah, that's a Beautiful good one. Beautiful movie. That's a good answer. Yeah. I like that. And it's not like trying to be Hollywood. It is it just is. core Bollywood, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. So Tell the viewers nice. who don't know about Lagan what it's about, <clears throat> in your Lagan words. Lagan is a movie about oppression in India during the British colonial rule, and it is this amazing story of uh, a small village that uh, tries to overcome 
the oppression and the severe taxation of the British during a drought. And they do so by playing a game of cricket and <laughs> challenging the British to a bet. And uh, it is a very, like, triumphant and uplifting film, which I think is both inspiring and beautifully done and colorful and has great music. And I think it shows at its core that India has great storytelling. And I think it's, it's great when we, like, focus on telling our stories and not trying to mimic Western films because Lagan was great. Right. That's very clever with the cricket <clears throat> and bets. Yeah. Everyone will do a bet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, India is known for their cricket, right? So do a movie that kind of plays up the pride of India and really mm -hmm. just shows its values without, like you saying, overplaying it. Yeah. They need to just do a lot more of those films, I think, great. in Bollywood. So yeah. that, that is a good answer. Thank you. Well, you passed somewhat that was of the rapid fire round. I shit my pants. I hope it's okay. You just need to do a little bit more practice. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> but let's start with your early stages, right? Okay. About when I was born. You want to see the video? Or uh, <laughs> we have that's it. okay. We'll fast forward to okay. your speaking All times. Right. I mean, you were a performer and entertainer since like the age of four, yeah. right? What was it about this field that always sparked your interest? Um, I, I think I enjoyed entertaining people ever since I was a kid. I Whether it was like dancing or trying to tell jokes or singing, which I'm terrible at. Or Are you sure? Playing, you yeah, I'm, no, I'm terrible. <laughs> I can hear my voice in this and I can tell you how terrible I'm singing would be. Um, Dancing, playing the drums, playing tabla, and I just, I, I found a value in entertaining people, and I, I really enjoyed seeing people's reactions, and mm -hmm. if I can make someone laugh, or I could make someone cry with a story, or whatever it was, I liked mm -hmm. uh, getting that kind of attention. I like trying to take people out of uh, the normal world, and just putting them inside their own brain, which can be fun. So, so. when did you think... When did other people start to recognize that, oh, wait, he's a little bit of a performer here? So first people were like, who's that kid? Because it was like not good performing, it was just performing, and it was like I was the oddball out. Um, and then in time, like the community, actually the Indian community that we have up north, and I'm from a state called Orissa, and we have these like Orias, and there's a great community, and they would support me and they would when we'd have events they would like encourage me to dance and sing and perform and do stand up and even though it was kind of bad in the beginning i think i got the self-confidence to mm -hmm. to keep going and then you quickly learn how bad you are but you <laughs> have the confidence to now pursue uh pursue these things seriously and then so i, I slowly got that backbone so i wasn't scared do you That's still play fun. the tabla? I do. Which is Indian percussion, yes. by the way, the drums. I'm not as good as I was about six years ago because I was practicing every day, but I could still knock out a tune or two. Why are you so, slacking? Oh, wow. six. I know, yeah. <laughs> it's just really hard to, like, in the in a busy day to just stop and, like, start doing some bongos. But, like, I know, right? Minutes, you know, get back to life. It's, it's hard, but it, it must is. be good kind of therapy, too, though. I think it any is. instrument, anything of art is good therapy for it me. It is. So. Music, and I listen to music, like, all day yeah, long. So. Completely. Who are you listening to right now? Um, I'm listening to a lot of soundtracks, actually. So I listen to a lot of John Powell, Hans Zimmer, uh, A.R. Rahman, who I love. Um, and I love trancey music, and I do like some occasional house, but I like things that get me thinking, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So did you, so you always knew, though, like when you were going to high school, when you were going to college, that you will be pursuing what you are pursuing now? Because you didn't you, you were kind of applying for your real estate license, you were doing other business-related work, Yeah, right? it was and just a didn't mess. Didn't you go to school for engineering? Yeah, uh, so... I never thought I was actually going to pursue this. This is something that I had been extremely passionate about, wanted to do forever, and I had this amazing passion for storytelling, but mm -hmm. I never thought, well, I mean, it's just not a career. If you think about it in the traditional sense, we are taught to believe that it's an impossible career, that like these, this few, not just 1%, but like a 1% of a 1% get the opportunity to actually turn yeah. those passions into a career. And Literally it's kind of 1%. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. Especially would... coming from a foreign household where oh, you yes. have, when you're a first generation. Yes. Yeah. And Indians, who Indian <laughs> parents <laughs> yeah. do not really support us going into entertainment, Absolutely. but what can they do but just be like, all right, beta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's cool because I, I understand their, their worries because it is hard, it is stressful. and. We come from, like, I always used to fight with my parents, like, I want to do this, I want to study film, yeah. I want to do this, and they were like, they used to get mad and get upset, and we used to argue a lot, but I tried to realize from their perspective, like, they grew up in, you know, dirt poor villages in India, yeah. and the only way out was engineering or medical and having a stable career, and then they came here, and they've worked hard to build their life. They're just not familiar with the, how this world works, right. so I think they're afraid that 
they want to protect us and they want us to mm -hmm. do well. And so it is that like worry that they know they can help us with this field and how this field works, but this is the unknown. And yeah, to the gray area, the gray the area, nest. and to leave the, the safety of the nest and what we know or leave the jungle entirely, yeah. I think that scares them. So I, I have a lot of respect for why they were so yeah. scared. Before I used to just, you know, fight with them about it, but <laughs> I do <laughs> understand. <laughs> yeah. Because there are times it's like I've left the jungle and I'm like, oh yeah. my God, I miss the jungle. I know. <laughs> right? This is me flying away, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. But I, you think about it and you, you go, I, it is scary because yeah. you'll be flying through the dark for a long time. So. But it seems like every single, well, every single, but it seems like, you know, hardships and failures that you possibly went through in your lifetime maybe have changed you. I mean, I know yeah. at, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure what age you were, but you were sh shopping for your high school tux for prom yeah. and right. an unfortunate incident happened to you. Yeah. So can you explain what happened and how that kind of changed your viewpoint? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I was 16. It was the day of uh, prom and I had... Uh, my tux rental waiting for me at the mall, and I was working at the a Jamba Juice at the time, so oh, nice. don't be too impressed, guys. <laughs> uh, one day I'll get on my level. I was 16. <clears throat> I was working at Jamba Juice, and uh, my mom came to pick me up, and we went to the mall to go get my tux literally four hours before photos and all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, I, we went inside. We realized I left my receipt in the car, so I <clears throat> told my mom, hang here. I'm going to go get the receipt. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. So I went back to the car, and then on my way, I guess I was being followed by, like, three skinheads from, oh, gosh. Uh, I think, somewhere in Oakland, like a neo-Nazi gang. And uh, I didn't really know what was happening, and I was literally walking towards my car. I heard something about, like, terrorist or some sort of racial remark. And then all I remember is when I turned, out, turned around, like, my head was bashed in. They broke my collarbone. Oh, my God. Uh, the detective said they had brass knuckles, so, like, my nose was broken, my arm was broken, my back was injured. Uh, I just kind of like conked out. I have no idea what happened. And then I woke in the hospital like a couple hours later. So it definitely, it was an intense experience and it was really terrifying at first because you, I've grown up, I was born in Canada. I was raised in the United States. <clears throat> you grow up thinking that you're just like part of your group of friends because I don't see any differences between my group of friends and we're all yeah. different races. We're all different, come from different backgrounds, but we're all just Americans having a good time. And that kind of scared me. It was like, it was the first realization that I'm different, that I'm not part necessarily mm. of this crew, crew, yeah. or I am, but not everybody thinks so. And, um, you know, for a while, it was a couple dark days. And I think, though, what ended up happening is I didn't really have a lot of people to talk to. Everybody, of course, came in to try to support, but it's hard to understand what it's like. So I started writing. And so actually my passion for storytelling and all of that, which at the time was not so had not taken that big of a threshold right it, that launched my career in a way into writing into my own the equivalent of a diary but yeah, channeling your inner thoughts right and, like, and i would write all these short stories where i would overcome my issues as the mm -hmm. hero or what have you it and must have been very therapeutic for you <clears throat> it was and my writing wasn't great before that and nor did i really have any kind of driving factor but i think that life or death moment was a am i going to because I believe one of the guys was like later caught in trouble for something serious, like potential murder or something like that. So wow. I realized I got out of that situation in the best way possible and I'm alive right. despite all the injuries. So alive to tell your story. Alive to tell my story. So with that like life or death moment, I think it it inspired me to really try hard to, I don't know, pursue the dreams. So And it also led you to doing a lot more uh, community work. I mean, you... <clears throat> You're 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 a part of donating to a lot of charities. You're really into raising social awareness. So even your film Naked Innocence, which won quite a few different awards, it yeah. was screened at Warner Brothers. Yeah, wasn't that kind of about? So, uh, well, you can explain it, but yeah, no. Um, I, I think it, it just op opened my eyes to social awareness issues, yeah. not just mm -hmm. race related, because. <clears throat> um, you realize that these kind of things, hate crimes in general, they happen to everybody. They happen to uh, different races, different orientations, and it's so prevalent. You see that going on with black churches now and, yeah, and police definitely. brutality yeah. and um, Muslims being, you know, uh, segregated and treated differently. I mean, it's um, gay rights. Every single social issue, I think, has some sort of relevance and importance, and it didn't mean so much to me before... Uh, that point mm -hmm. and that point kind of made me realize that I started to sympathize with everybody's cause a little bit because I realized I was in that group now that because you think ah, it doesn't bother me it doesn't affect me it until doesn't, it happens to you until it happens to you and then you really understand like 
what what it feels like. And that's so. a very early age to really get yeah. that uh, new perspective mm -hmm. on everything. It's totally well, of course, life altering, but I'm sure it even changed the nature of your work also. And Definitely. yeah. People tell me I'm like mentally 90, so it's like kind of <laughs> scary. I think that ah. point, I used to be like a child up until 16, and then like that week made me age so like 20 mature. years mm. because you kind of just think back and you really start thinking about your life. I think anybody with a near life or death experience probably has that. What can you do but turn it upside down and think of it as a blessing in disguise, right? I, That's yeah, really absolutely. the only way to turn your life around. So, absolutely. And you did that. So it's, it's more, just more like, hate to be all preachy, but it really is just more inspiration for others. Like, turn every single negative situation into some sort of positive. There's right. always yeah. a sunny side to something. <laughs> <laughs> I totally did not even. I that just, was the best just, okay. Ever. Okay, you definitely wrote that I, down. No, Don't I be like, I'm not I literally all not last even. night, you were like, all right, I gotta get the sunny <laughs> yeah, side in. Oh, like I was there. Yeah, please. Please, people. All props to Kanika. But, was amazing. <laughs> but, but your work. Okay, I need some sort of timeline on it because it's like you, you, you were a comedian, you did a lot of stand up comedy, but then you also did a lot of on camera work in terms of acting. Sure. Um, and then all of a sudden you were modeling here and there. I mean, here right. you are at Mr. India. Uh, global. Looking very Mr. dapper. Oh my yeah. god, are those photos of me? Ew. Yes. <laughs> Gross. As a former beauty queen to, I guess, a former beauty king, no, no, no. I there. <laughs> you also, look former great. implies that I look like shit now because you're like <laughs> no. as someone who like a, a long time ago model, who used to <laughs> look good okay. <laughs> How was it back in the glory days? Now that you're all <laughs> withered away. <laughs> but did you like started the show calling you Holly McHot Hot? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did you enjoy you know modeling for because uh, you had a lot of different brands that you were in charge of Mountain Dew HTC UCLA yep. even your own school mm -hmm. um, did that lead you to, to doing more just okay actually I want to be more behind the camera sure what um, was your timeline there to be honest actually so I had really been interested in filmmaking and writing that was a passion and I just like I didn't know how to break in and there's really mm -hmm. no way to break in it's like you would go, I would go to like studios with my scripts when I was 17 and then they would be like, get lost, come back with an agent. Then I'd go to mm -hmm. agencies and they'd be like, come back with a referral from the studios. And I was like, how do I, it's a, it's a catch 22. How do you bridge that gap? So in the interim, while I was writing my scripts, I needed something to at least get some exposure and network because right. a lot of people are fortunate enough to have a lot of good connections. Yeah. We had none. Like yeah. we know I, my dad at one point, he was so cute. He was like, Okay, you're trying to do movies, right? I have a friend. He works at uh, Toshiba DVD maker. It's movies. Maybe I'll do an introduction. I was like, so he works at the DVD player company? He's like, yeah, movies. And I was like, you know, I don't think he's going to I really appreciate it. So they don't understand networking in that sense. And yeah. I needed to do whatever I could. So I found out about this pageant, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's run by a woman named Jinder Chohan. It's called the Mr. Miss India uh, Global Pageant, mm -hmm. and Mr. Miss, Mr. and Miss India America. And uh, I was like really embarrassed. I was like, I don't do pageants. Like, I, <laughs> Every man do I have says to wear that until a Speedo and just walk around? <laughs> and so I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> Sunny right? and a Speedo. <laughs> yeah, no problem with the Speedo part. Um, but <laughs> I was like, all right, what? A, this is kind of embarrassing, but I didn't tell anybody, and I entered the pageant, and uh, it was, it was fun. I felt a little bad because a lot of people were taking it really seriously. Like they'd come from like South Africa mm. and London. And I was like, I should probably be a little bit more serious about this. And then I secretly did it. And then I think I won Mr. Photogenic and Mr. India Global. And what was good and what was my goal is that I got to network with like the judges yeah. and the executives mm. who had come. And I met some people from NBC and some agents and managers. So I started getting a lot of modeling gigs from that opportunity, which was great. Uh, but at the same time, though, it, it almost kind of didn't work as well for the writing stuff because people think that like you're a, you're On an idiot camera. because they're oh. like, oh, you're you're just stand there and look pretty. And I was like, actually, I need you to read this. It's my script. And <laughs> right. they're like, oh, he thinks he's literate. How cute is that? <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm actually I'm, I'm better on paper than yeah, on right. camera. But that's how it kind of started. And then from time to time. You know, I, I loved working with HTC. They reached out and mm -hmm. uh, they have a new phone coming out and they said, we want you to, you know, be the face for this phone and, and do a shoot. That must and have been really cool, though. It was really fun. And they were all so nice to work with. Mm -hmm. And it was it was different. And I enjoyed, like, keeping things interesting because sometimes yeah. as a writer, it can get really boring. Like, you're just sitting in different cafes, homes, That's true. Or offices and just Spicing it up. in there. So sometimes it's just glam that. up. And yeah, no, why not? <laughs> yeah, take some photos. No harm. What about no. last team standing? Was that yeah. really your first time on stage? And No, it wasn't my first time on stage. I think it was my first time trying like mainstream comedy. Um, 
I'd been doing stand up like at local Indian events, and I would do them actually in different languages. They were not even in English; it was in Hindi or Oriya. Okay. Um, but I th- yeah, go ahead. Did explain just Oriya for the for viewers oh, who yeah, might not like, know? Oreos? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Oreos. Yeah, Oreos are great. Too. Yeah, they are. Um, Good band. <laughs> it was. Uh, it's a language from the state of Orissa in India, which is where my family and I are. Are from because so like, not many people are aware that there are actually different states in India. Yeah. They might just think there's different. You're regions, just all but... brown, right? Yeah, like, right. That's yeah. all they know. There's like a north and yeah. a south, but whatever. And I love Tandoor Kitchen on Santa Monica. Yeah, right? I love Tikka Masala. <laughs> that's all you guys, which we take credit for. We're no, like, completely. Yeah. I'm proud of that. Oh yeah, Samosa, Saffron that's Kitchen. All me. Yeah, exactly. That's all me. Um, yeah, what he says like a northeast state, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's got a completely different dialect from Hindi. So we uh, that was my first language. Can you actually. say one thing? Uh, which means I'm speaking in Oriya. So, oh, yeah, that's it's not really that. Cool. But say in Hindi how the difference is. So it's like different. I don't think anyone can tell the difference, but I can. Oh, there you go. See? <laughs> yeah, no, I totally can't, but I'm just saying for English speaking, it's it, kind of hard. It's very different. It's like Mandarin and though. Korean. Like, yeah. they're not even, you know, that's true. Cantonese. It's, it's a far difference. True. So. Yes. So what now more. Yeah, go ahead. Well, now we're going <laughs> to go into more of your today today's sure. work, which um, one of your I guess you started off doing a fun project yeah. uh, with keeping up with the Guptas, and now it's now it's like huge. Right. Well, I uh, don't know about huge, but it was it was. <laughs> well, uh, at least it's getting noticed yeah, by definitely. important people. That's Very what, important well, that's what people. I mean. But tell us about the whole journey. Okay. From with day one, real... when I was born. <laughs> Let's start with the birthing video. No, oh, I really want you guys to play video. that. No about... one will air it. <laughs> um, maybe next time you come to Bollywood, we can consider okay. it. Okay. Yeah. But how yeah. about when you? What made you come up with the idea in the first place to talk about your family this way? Um, so Guptas. So Guptas was, you know, things were just. I think it, it was kind of around the 2008 recession, and things were a little messy at home, and. Everybody was just kind of distant and stressed out and, you know, not everybody was getting along. You know, my parents, my mm-hmm. sister, me, everyone. So um, I had been writing a lot of stuff and I'd been doing stand up and I thought it would be kind of fun to have a project that would just force my family to hang out and spend some time together. <laughs> and um, so I wrote this little script called Keeping Up With The Guptas. Uh, I went up north with a couple buddy of mine, a couple buddies of mine, a guy named Sahil from UCLA and a friend Sumi from UC Irvine, and uh, I convinced everybody to help me shoot this. We shot a little web series with my actual parents, with myself. My sister made a cameo. My friends were in it, and honestly, it was a family bonding exercise. Mm-hmm. It was not something. In fact, it was just terrible production value. We had no equipment. <laughs> I went to like. Circuit City, and that doesn't oh even exist God. anymore. So that's how terrible it was. I got used like to a, go there. Right? Oh my God, you just like went back memory Don't lane. Cry. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Did I'll you try have not to cry. Okay. Um, so I had a really terrible camera, and we didn't have any quality microphones or anything. So horrible execution, but it was really fun and funny, and uh, we got to really spend time together as a family. And I think it really reconnected my family in a fun new way because everybody's always busy. Everybody's working and stress and you know, dinner conversations just became non-existent and it was like people would just kind of come, eat mm-hmm. their dinner and leave and it made me a little sad that the family would just had nothing to yeah, communicate talk or talk about. Yeah. So this became this like fun activity that we started doing like several days in a row and on weekends and from morning till night like with the whole family and we're filming scenes and improv and writing scripts and shooting and coming up with all these crazy characters and <laughs> it was just a riot. Like we were having a fun time in our own little world and uh, my cousins and some family friends said, we want to see the videos, you know, we love your parents, because I thought, again, it's very close to my family, we'll send it over to us. And then I put like a couple clips on YouTube and mm-hmm. then sent it to them. And then very quickly, you know, the hits were going from, you know, 10,000 to 50,000 to 70,000. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. And then people started downloading it and reposting it illegally on other sites, which is good for <laughs> us because we would still get like 70,000 here, 100,000 yeah. here. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. It was in the Times of India, the Lakers were watching it. Like people were actually thought this family was really, really funny. And I, at the same time, I was still here trying to meet agents, meet uh, studios, et cetera, because I had written so many things and I wanted to share them, but no one knew who I was, so no one cared. But that actually ended up opening enough doors that I was able to meet you know, agencies and, and studios and networks. Um, 
which kind of led to how things came together today. Well, That's weren't you at Fox and you were looking just for kind of a regular writing position? Yeah, all of a sudden I wouldn't they be were... happy with the custodian position. Right. Right. I know, if anything at Fox, but they were actually out. interested <laughs> in your concept of keeping up with the couples and you walked out of the room yeah. with actually almost a deal, right? Yeah, uh, so it is a deal, it's a development deal. Um, it's still in the work. So basically, uh, we had gone in there because my agents had set me up to see if there's any staffing positions open. I had written a bunch of other specs and original scripts that they had liked, and they're always interested in seeing if there's a young writer who could work on somebody else's show. Mm -hmm. um, and I met with a VP and SVP over there, and they were so nice to me and so awesome. Uh, they were so nice, I got really comfortable. It almost became like therapeutic, and I just like <laughs> laid down and started telling them all about my life. <laughs> I was like, and then I used to be fat, and people used to believe me, and my parents were so embarrassed, and then I dated a fat girl, and it was just like this huge mess, and I was like, it turned into a counseling session, oh and they were gosh. like, oh my god, this kid has issues, but issues make for a great television. Yeah, they do. So Great writing. And great writing, yeah. and uh, I did not get a staffing position there at the time, but they decided they wanted to develop um, a show kind of based loosely based on my life and my family's life. It's not really keeping up with the Guptas, but it has similar inspiration, and uh, it'll be about an Indian American family in the U.S. and um, it should be it should be fun. So that's kind of how that all happened. It was very weird. It's like people think things happen overnight. Mm -hmm. They don't realize that for like six years you're literally writing every day. You're going to meetings. You're trying, and you're getting absolutely nowhere. But you're getting better, and you're getting right. better, and your scripts are getting better, and one by one more and more people around town start to get to know you and each executive each agent each manager each producer every as you kind of become known within that network it, it's you put yourself in line to get that opportunity in. and you definitely put yourself in a line in a good place just because right now television is so open to diversity mm -hmm. just definitely. now Even just um, it's progressing shows. slowly yeah like we yeah. had fresh off the boat yeah. on mm -hmm. abc which was about an asian american family or you know mm -hmm. what are they korean Yes. Um, actually, no, they were Chinese. I think. I, I, they I covered Taiwan? that show <laughs> for uh, After Buzz TV, so that was. Uh, anyways, yeah. um, so it's a good time now because I feel like they're, they're open to these kind of ideas. But I remember us talking kind of before, and the whole concept of keeping up with the Guptas, it's really to stray away from the typical stereotypes, right, of an Indian family. It's more like it's a family. Yeah with normal problems that your family goes through, mm -hmm. but it just hap they happen to be Indian. So how much of it, I mean, I know you can't tell me so much of what's, you know, the premise of it, yeah. but uh, maybe your hopes for it instead. Sure. How much of the Indian touch would you like it to be in there and how much of it would you not? So it opens in a 7-Eleven with a guy in a turban <laughs> eating oh, <no>. curry. <laughs> yeah. And then he farts and then he smells bad. <laughs> and then, it's a, no, it is completely, <laughs> I, I want to avoid all stereotypes as much as possible. I want it to be a show that is just about an American family that happens to be Indian. Mm -hmm. And we get to incorporate our culture and our understanding of the world but it's not through stereotypes, not through cheesy mm -hmm. jokes about, you know, turbans or yeah. bindis, which we call dots or whatever it is. It is learning this culture and appreciating it. I think um, I don't want people to see it and go, that's a show about Indians. I want people yeah. to see it and be like, that's an awesome show. Kind of like the Cosby show where that's true. nobody said, oh, look at this black comedy. Right, that's it, true. it was a great family show that everybody could relate to. Yeah. And you learn small things about black culture through it, yeah. but you don't see it as different. And mm -hmm. that's how I want the show to be. I want people to appreciate and understand Indian culture, but not have to look at it like they're seeing something through a, you know, a zoo mirror or whatever it is. Like, look at those. Mm -hmm. But will you address those topics? Absolutely. There's another show that's really popular right now, similar to Cosby Show, is Blackish. Yep. And they yeah. kind of like walk that thin line between uh, we're just trying to show a family, but yep. it's called Blackish. So yeah. we do have to address some things Definitely. that are um, talked about and considered black culture. Yeah. I, I think we, we, you know, we address everything from things like uh, the importance of grades and education mm -hmm. to Indian marriages and hot topics like arranged marriages or cultural issues or Hindu Muslim relationships or Will there be any Bollywood in keeping up with it? I have no idea. To they be have to be watching Bollywood yeah. movies. I mean, I'm going to be the first one to volunteer to take my shirt off and dance around like a <laughs> tree with like 30 dancers. Um, I don't know if they'll go for the pitch, but there will, there will be a lot of color and it'll be interesting. And again, it's a development deal, so we still have to take it out to networks and see how the networks respond. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got 20th behind it, which is good, and uh, an amazing, great team over there. And then we'll kind of see if who 
who picks it up or who's interested. But um, I think it should be fun. And like I said, I, I want people to learn about our culture, but in a way that makes it understandable and it's not like you're looking through something different. What well, do your parents if, think? Especially they're since really they were part of the original. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. They're the ones oh, my mom's <laughs> like, it's all me. Yeah. No, she's, and that's she's, like your mom's character. I was going to shout out to, for those of you who have not seen Keep Me Up With The Guptas, make sure to check it out on YouTube. It's under your what your YouTube page, Sunny T. Sunny T Films. Sunny T Films. And you can search Keep Me Up With The Guptas yeah. and you'll find it. it his family is more sensen uh, sens sensationalized. Know, sensationalized. Gotcha. Sorry, guys. I can have speech problems sometimes. It's okay. Um, yeah, they're more of an exaggerated sense of themselves. So that's what probably makes it even more inviting to watch, especially your mom. Yeah. Your mom is probably one of the most favorite characters out of Eric. She is. She is so, the best character. She's Everybody loves her. It's yeah. funny because uh, when that show kind of became a hit in our town in Northern California, um, people, it's a small town, so my parents suddenly became famous. And I will not <laughs> forget, we had gone to the movies to go see like Inception or something, and everybody wanted to take photos. Like all these like high schoolers, like college kids, everybody was going up to my parents. And the funniest part is I was with them. And everybody was like, oh my god, could we get a picture with the Guptas? And I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> and they were like, here. And they'd go stand with my parents, and I was like, yeah, no, it's, it's cool. Um, you became the cameraman. I became the cameraman, and I'm happy to do it because they are so funny, yeah. and they're, mm -hmm. they're solid. I really hope that we could try. I'm going to push for my mom to potentially be on the Fox yeah. Project because yeah. she's actually that good and actually that funny. She has way more fans. Than anybody else in her space. I think I your think dad's of. good too, though. Yeah, like your he is dad good. and your mom work well together, obviously because they're married. But yeah. he 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 balances her out. He so. does. They're polar opposites, and it's great. It is. Yeah. Um, well, best of luck to that Thank show. You. I'm really excited to see its development. Thank you. Same. But I don't want to stray away too much from sure. the topic of Bollywood. But I, you know, obviously. This panel, for those of you who might be like, well, where's Bollywood coming in? Yeah. I mean, when is Sunny going to dance? When is Sunny going to dance? It's <laughs> Indian Americans, right? It's Indian Americans in India. It's Indian Americans in America that we're trying to take notice of. And you're one of them. And there's many more. And I'm proud to just, you know, create more awareness on that. Sure. So, but your opinions on Bollywood, the Bollywood industry, where do you think it's headed? And do you think everything that's going to be um, in mainstream America, showing films that people are actually talking about in the news? Sure. Um, so I, I think Bollywood's an interesting space. They have a lot of money. They have, they turn out more films than any other industry in the world. Not all of them are great films. In fact, a lot are not. But they do have some phenomenal films. I think Bollywood's greatest strength is when they focus on Indian stories and Indian storytelling. And that's when I think it's most beautiful and really well done. When they try to imitate, like all... All studios and all companies and all countries try to emulate Hollywood in their own film industry. Right. And I think that can sometimes ruin things a little bit mm -hmm. because it's really hard to outdo someone like Warner Brothers. And you shouldn't have to. You, you have your own stories to tell. They're doing theirs. You should do yours and you'll be most successful. Like movies like Lagan or Three mm -hmm. Idiots or, yeah. or great movies like that that I think India is really proud of. Um, I do think Bollywood is going to start making a move here. Uh, you know, I'm fortunate enough to know the Lola family who runs Eros International. Oh, wow. And they're awesome, and they are they have some very cool things in the works. Um, potentially some collaborations with projects here. I mean, they just did Dil Dardakne, though, which was awesome. Yeah, I have to see that. It's hilarious. Uh, Priyanka Chopra and Anil Kapoor, they all did an awesome job. Yeah, I, I heard they did. Yeah, it was good. And I took, actually, I took a lot of my American friends, including some from Fox. Really? And I was kind of nervous, and I was like, <laughs> they are never going to talk to me again. But we got, <laughs> so I warmed them up to, them, yeah. to it with, like, Indian food. We went right. to an Indian restaurant. Oh, had chicken really tikka masala. Kind of put them into the culture. I was like, yeah, they, they were all, like, warm and, and comfortable. And cozy, so they could <laughs> exactly. watch and we saw it in theaters, and they actually all were laughing out loud and really enjoyed it. So I think when we focus on our best stories and doing it well, it will be well received here. And it's just a matter of time before, hopefully there's a lot more Indian-American crossover work, be it things like the Guptas. Well, we, yeah, exactly. And we also have Priyanka Chopra, who is starring in Quantico, which yep. is a new fall show. And we see Rithik Roshan, who is right. now also starring in a Hollywood production. Mm -hmm. Of course, we've seen Amita Bachchan in The Great, Great Gatsby. Gatsby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel that maybe he's such a big hit in India and doing a small role in America. I'm not sure how he feels about that. Sometimes yeah. it could really subdue someone's ego. But anyways, besides I think it's the point. Good. I think it's humbling yeah. because the problem is in yeah. India, people, you know, I, I do know a lot of people from Bollywood and sometimes 
sometimes some of them their heads can get really high because in india they're treated like gods because in yes, the film industry literally. is the equivalent of gods in in india yep so coming here is a really important and humbling way to keep them all grounded because suddenly they realize they have to like still fight to get Work the attention hard. of the world so i think it's a great thing i think uh, they handle it well probably and i'm sure it's it's humbling for them would you ever get attached to a Bollywood production? Would you ever want to work in that? Or? Um, it looks like there might actually be some opportunities for that wow. coming up Ooh. around the corner. So I think just like Indians are coming here to yeah. try to learn the American voice, I might try to take a little bit of the American voice over to India and try to see how that fits uh, in Indian content and Indian programming as well. So, What do you think Indians in India need? Um, how can they be more Americanized through an Indian's perspective living in America? Does that make sense? That was a question. Try again. So <laughs> You're close. You want to be a voice for Indians in India from sure. your perspective living as an Indian American in America. Yes. Right? Yes. What message would you want to come across? What do you think they need to hear? How will you be that voice? That's my question, I guess. Um, wow. I... I think it'll be an interesting perspective because we have very different upbringing. So people in India have their own upbringing. People here have their own upbringing. I think the good thing is, is that our upbringing here has been a lot more liberal. Mm -hmm. So be it our opinions on social issues and equality and for, you know, women's rights and gay rights and religious rights and all of that. I think it's been a lot more liberal over here. And so... I think that is the kind of openness I want to take back to India. So a lot of my projects, the projects that I have in development that we might be partnering up with uh, some Indian team members for, a lot of them actually touch on those issues where in rural areas where there's still caste systems or women are not st still treated equally or, um, you know, all of that sort of stuff, social issues over there, I think that is going to be the main thing that I would try to push over there that's the only thing i think i can really try to spearhead and offer a little bit more of than people within the country it sounds like you're trying to go over there and push some boundaries yeah it's well someone do. needs to there needs to be a bunch of people who have to do that yeah if you're proud of your country and your culture yeah absolutely i think it's going to be it's not going to be easy and it's going to be no, scary it's not. and um, India, unfortunately, very is very headstrong in their ways. Yeah. At least the people who rule it, right? The yeah. elders. But the generation that that are it's a great generation. Oh the my young people gosh, are awesome. they're so liberal. Yeah, yeah. The, almost you know, too liberal. Sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> some clothes. A bit. I know. Wait, not actually. you. You you can take it off. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think that's a great thing. Is the exciting thing it is, is very that exciting. the younger generation, just like us, understands us. We all have the same mentalities and the mm. same openness and you know issues. And I think that's exciting because the yeah. people who are really bigoted are starting to die out quite literally yeah. and it's great and yeah. it's just a cleanse of like better nicer more open more loving people and so i want to just go there the and push it with the new. yeah <laughs> as long as the new is good yeah <laughs> but speaking of indian americans you also met mindy kaling you yeah. guys were both named the top 50 of the uh coolest faces she's in way the world. cooler than i am she <laughs> she is really cool and i'm also proud of her because i think you also mentioned that <clears> she <throat> is someone who aware is aware of her indian culture but she's yeah. not defined by it exactly um but she also gave you some piece of advice yeah that a lot. Um, or something you mentioned. I just want to know what she kind of told you. That Sure. I met her twice. Uh, I wish we were BFFs. We're definitely not. You but will be. You be BFFs uh, in your head. Oh, in my head. Yeah. We are <laughs> married. Yeah. We've head. got like four kids. I don't know. If you know. <laughs> and two dogs, if you would. Too far? Um, no, she was great. The two times I met her, um, they were actually really stressful points in my life. I didn't have agents. I didn't have managers. I had just literally been working internships. I couldn't even get a script through the door. And... Um, when she was sitting, she was prepping for a speech and we chatted and she talked about her journey, like her, the amount of internships she had to do, the unpaid internships. She was literally babysitting at the age that I was when I, I met her and I was stressing out. She was like babysitting for money. And this is, I think, just before she was working for Conan or Saturday Night Live. And she really put in the time and effort and kind of learning her darker days helped me not only appreciate her better ones, but know that it's possible mm. because I was fortunate enough to run into her when she was hitting her best days and I was in my dark ones. And she essentially just opened me up to her darker days. And uh, it was really nice to, to see. It was a good motivation because you want people who have really struggled and worked hard to be successful because there's nothing more 
I guess, unmotivating than seeing people who are insanely successful who either don't deserve it or haven't worked for it. Right. So seeing these people like from the grassroots and from the bottom actually climbing their way up to the top and going through some really difficult stuff to get there, that's so inspiring. I, I, I feed off yeah. of that kind mm -hmm. of energy. Energy, yeah. completely. We're feeding off of it right now. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Completely. Psyched. And someday you'll be able to do the same thing with someone else, you know, yeah. shining your light. To a very little their light, so it's like limited light right <laughs> It'll now. It'll grow. It'll to, grow. It's, yeah, <laughs> it definitely yeah. will. And the last thing I also want to bring up, and you have to tell me something about it, because sure. I've been reading like a little reports about it, something about the Mahabharat. Oh, interesting. Um, it is very <laughs> interesting. And like literally, I would be talking to my friend this about how we need... This part where I need, get to walk out of the... <laughs> no. How no, we need right like a movie that's based <clears throat> on the Ramayan. I thought the Ramayan. Um, mm -hmm. But can you just tell the viewers and listeners what the Mahabharat is and maybe what your involvement, a little bit involved okay, in Okay, so that? there's a lot of books based on uh, Hindu mythology. Two of the most famous ones are Ramayana and Mahabharat. Um, Ramayana is a beautiful story, uh, you know, where two princes and one of the older princes' uh, wives is kidnapped and she's held hostage in uh, Sri Lanka or Lanka and it's the story of how he goes to win her wife back and he takes a war to go get his wife back. And Mahabharat is a story about five princes who, the Pandavas, who were essentially ousted from their rightful uh, inheritance of the throne. And um, it's by an evil cousin, it's a story about greed, it's kind of like Game of Thrones. And they were exiled unfairly and, you know, cheated in a game and their wife was molested. And so now they're going to go and wage this insane war to go a huge, massive world war to go win their kingdom back. It's a very cool story. Um, they're very culturally complex. They're very intricate. Um, a lot of people want to make movies about them because it's just some of the largest story franchises in the world. Yeah, I mean, the biggest messages we even see in today's <clears> media <throat> about sacrifice, about yeah. greed, right? right. War. So. Oh, yeah. Ve they're all actually very politically relevant. It's yeah. funny, you look at all these like medieval stories, mm. but they're actually like completely happening right now, except without swords, there's guns. And but there's right. also a lot of love. Like, it's yeah. sacrifice for love. It's a yeah. war for love. Of That's course. why I think Bollywood is the way it is, why Indians are so joyous. It's because yeah. we all do it out of some sort of celebration for love, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's, I think... Well, how will you... Okay, yeah, go on, sorry. Yeah, what is your role? <laughs> yeah, what is my role? role in, yes, or potential Again, role. shirt off Bollywood dancing. That's all I... <laughs> that is my role in every project. It's, it's in my contract. Um, so I... I'm currently trying to see if I can spin uh, a couple of those stories into modern day adaptations uh, in a huge blockbuster commercial form. Um, and I've got to meet some incredible people here, both in Hollywood and India. And I'm actually in the process of trying to see if I can bridge the gap. Now, it's not necessarily going to be the Mahabharat or the Ramayana, but all I can say, it's going to be based on Hindu mythology. And a lot of characters will be very similar or exactly the same from some of these stories. And I'm incorporating a lot of gods into the story. So it's kind of this like huge, high budget, high concept fantasy project with wars between gods and men and earth and different worlds. And it's colorful. War and, between God and man? Yeah, there it's has a little to interesting. be a war between God and man. Yeah, That's wow. intense. everybody's involved. There's gods involved, there's men involved, and there's gods from different sides. Uh, I've been studying all, a lot of Hindu mythology over the last like six, seven years. Yeah. Um, and I think I've finally, you know, come up with something that could that could work. So. But that also fit in today's mod, like a modern yeah. twist. Yeah. Like so, for example, the producers and people I've been meeting with here, who are Hollywood, completely English commercial, uh, I guess, producers and executives, none of them had any familiarity with Hindu mythology right. to start with. Right. But. From start to finish of my projects, they completely understood. And what was kind of one thing you had to tell them to explain it, like in their voice? I mean, in their language, how would you translate Hindu mythology? Well, Hindu mythology is huge, but the they story did, that I well, told about, yeah. talked about, it was just about um, betrayal between family leads to war, and that's it. Okay, it was okay. really that simple. And okay. if you think about it, the root of a lot of those stories um, is the exact same as any of the stories that we have here. Yeah. It was just really long and complicated and mm -hmm. intricate and really culturally heavy, filled with chicken tikka masala. So you have to like <laughs> keep some of the chicken tikka masala and then add that Hollywood flair and 
that beautiful yeah. visual spectacle yeah. to make it appealing to everybody around the world, not just right. Indians. And especially since Greek mythology stories have been so huge <clears> in <throat> film, mm -hmm. I could totally see how the translation with Hindu mythology films would be mm -hmm. huge international blockbusters. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I, I, I think so. And I'm, I feel fortunate that I'm in a position, I think, to walk that line because a lot of people, there's always domestic content within India being churned out for this, but they kind of have the Bollywood, Indian, Hindu angle on it. It's very kind of like in that bubble. Yeah. And then there's <clears throat> people here in Hollywood who are familiar with the stories, but they don't know how to, you know, even start decrypting all of this for an international film, maintain the cultural sensitivity, um, and find something that appeals to everyone and doesn't start another actual world war. Yeah, I know. So I was kind of lucky that I was walking both the cultural line of having projects and an understanding of the religious, cultural, and sensitive material, and also the Hollywood line of what works in mainstream studio television and feature films. It's hard um, to choose that balance, but... Yeah, it's a really fun ABCDs, y'all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, but it seems like you'd be American the perfect agent for that, <laughs> by the way. Huh? <laughs> oh, I was saying, it seems like you'd be the perfect agent for that. I, I hope yeah. so. It, yeah. it seems that way, so let's see. And you have a book? Like, come on, Sonny, oh. just stop can it you, now. Can you stop being... Actually, uh, continue. Right, God right, loves everyone right. except you. Is that the name of the book? Yeah, is it going to be coming out soon? I hope so. Um, okay. So that book is actually just still a manuscript. It's okay. probably about 350 pages long. Okay. Um, it was just a collection of stories that I was writing through college, through high school, uh, just a comedic nonfiction riot of college stories, party stories, relationships, family issues... Um, I think it'll be relatable to everybody who's young. And uh, I've literally just started meeting with agents for that. It's still in the early phases, but that book has also turned into a concept for an animated television series, which oh, I'm not wow. pitching now. So oh, cool. I don't know which would come first, either the book or the TV series or, or both at the same time. But Why not all at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't handle probably all book, of Probably book first. It's I nice. think so. I think more people are geared towards watching it yeah. after they hear it's based on a book. Yeah. And a right. lot of TV shows nowadays are... are Gives a lot of credibility. But the fact Definitely. is you also wrote the book and yeah. you'd be helping it with the animated. So that's different. I yeah. think a, a lot of writers adapt it from another author. Of course. So Yeah. Wow. Y'all, watch out for Sunny T, okay? No. He is the definition of ambition and innovation. But thank you so much for, oh, thank you for, for coming me. out today. We really appreciate it. Is there anything that you wanted to ask? Last you we pretty asked much for? wrapped it up, um, except uh, for the ladies. Ah. <laughs> what, what's going on in your... I, I heard that Sunny is very India. private, but over here we don't we don't believe private. in that, so you have to just tell it when we ask, all right? Um, I am private. I think there there is someone in my life right now, um, and we're trying to. There were a lot of like rumors on like urban Asian. I, that's why I'm asking. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what are the rumors? Asked, what? They're like, oh, we I saw am Sunny dating Beyonce. Were those the rumors? Yeah. <laughs> We're totally we saw dating. Sunny walking out with this girl. We saw Sunny doing this. Girl. Like, Damn! Wow! I just walk out with a lot of girls. I like wait at Starbucks, and then it was the hottest girl that walks through. I just like just quickly walk through. Like, can someone get that on camera? Um, yeah, but there's there's someone right now who's special, and Good. she's uh, she's very different. She's very grounded and very awesome. And Good. Uh, you know, she also works in the industry, but she we both see eye to eye, and I I think we're gonna. Just take it easy. I think we're yeah, both very yeah. ambitious. The good thing is right now you're, we're both in our hustle phases and our struggle phases. And if you get too lost in like the fantasy land of, oh, let's just focus on the relationship too early, I don't think either of us are ready for that. So I'm sure we all made those mistakes, guys, <coughs> in our relationship. <laughs> yes. This is a very relatable topic, but yes. I'm happy for you. Thank very you. happy. Thank you. Nice. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this week's Bali What. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as usual, make sure to follow Popcorn Talk on all platforms, YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, as well as Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Like us, subscribe, comment. We love hearing from you. I'm your host, Kanika Lal. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Kanika Lal, Instagram at You Can Have It Lal, and my YouTube channel, Kanika Connects. Guys, you can keep up with me on Twitter and on Instagram at VivaciouslyViv and then also VivaciouslyVivian.com. And of course... You can't even keep up with me, so don't even... <laughs> Let's keep uh, up with Sunny. I just made an Instagram. It's at FunnySunnyT. So if you're really bored, give it a like or whatever. <laughs> follow. I don't even know how social media works. One of those things. Yeah, one of those things. Yeah. All right, thanks guys and see you next time.
From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals. 